Hello everyone and welcome. Earlier tonight I was watching the WAN show on Linus Tech Tips and Linus spent 30 to 40 minutes of the show trying to justify some comments he made or his general position about the price of the RTX 3080 Ti in his review video published on the same channel earlier in the week. And apparently a lot of people were upset about his review and specifically his, his lack of disgust over the $1,200 price tag of the 3080 Ti. And I've, I've written down six of the, the major things he said during this. There, there may have been another one I wanted to cover, but I do not remember it. I already tried recording this video once. It was way too long, and then the computer crashed, and technically I had most of it, but I wasn't able to actually finish. So, we'll try again. Anyway, so I've got six points to cover. I'll try to cover them quickly. Uh, the point number one that he made, um, or the point number one that I want to cover, is that he seemed to think that $1,200 was a normal price for a whatever ADTI card. And he specifically pulled up the RTX 2080 Ti and looked at the MSRP, you know, the original MSRP. And the Founders Edition did originally retail for $1,200. I've got the price of that pulled up right here. Um, it does show a launch price of MSRP 999 I think that's for the reference design, not the... Not the Founders Edition. It was the Founders Edition on an Antec for eleven hundred ninety nine dollars or twelve hundred dollars for the RTX twenty eighty Ti. So this is what he looked at on the stream, and he's like, "Oh yeah, that's that's completely normal. That's completely fine," and. Um, I beg to differ. I own a GTX 1080 Ti. And it cost me, I think it was $830. It was an Asus ROG Strix overclocked edition, you know, the works. And uh, it cost, I, I think, $830 MSRP or, or somewhere around that, $800, $830. I paid more like $870 after shipping and taxes because, you know, the government has to stick their finger in every pie they can. But um, let's just take a quick look. I've got MSRPs for a number of video cards pulled up here. So let's take a look back at the GTX 1080 Ti. The launch price for that was $699 or $700. $700. Next generation was $1,200. That's... $500 more from generation to generation for the top of the line gaming card, right? If you don't include the Titans or any other wacky things that they came out with, you know, for the whatever 80 Ti card, that's, that's a $500 price hike. And quite frankly, $700 is what the 3080 costs. Everybody seems to think that that's perfectly fine. Let's go back another generation to the 900s. Here we've got the 980 Ti, and it was $650. That's $50 less than the 1080 Ti. And going back another generation, we have the 780 Ti for $700. So apparently for the GTX 9 series, it, it dropped 50 bucks for the top of the line card for some reason, but I actually had a, a GTX 780 back before it, before my 1080 Ti, it died. So going back another generation, we had, I, I could not find a Ti version of the 680 or the 580. So this was this was the good old days where the, the top of the line, you know, whatever 80 card was 500 bucks. Both of them, the 580 and the, the 680, are both $500. $1,200. 
1200 for the 3080 Ti. I mean, the 3080 at uh, 700 is a little bit pricey, right? So that's a little bit pricey for a 3080. But I can understand after however many years of inflation needing to charge maybe 100 or 200 more for it. But 500 more. United States dollars, 500 of them. That's that's absurd. That's ludicrous. That's too much. Too too much. Way too much. Now, with the, with the RTX 20 series, a lot of people tried to justify it by saying that the, the cards contained a bunch of new tech that required a bunch of R&D and NVIDIA needed to recoup the costs from that. But it really was too much of a price hike. Way too much. And that's one of the reasons why the RTX 2080 Ti didn't sell that well, from what I understand. I'm going off of what Steve Burke from Gamers Nexus said. And I imagine that the 3080 Ti would have been the same way if we weren't in a market where you just cannot buy video cards, right? I mean, who would buy the thing at the current price point? It's, it's ridiculous. But anyway... And as far as the pricing goes, like one of the points Linus made when talking about this being a normal price is that this card is not marketed at the budget gamer. It's not marketed, marketed at the guy looking for the media band card. It's, it's marketed at the guys looking for the extreme cards, the, the high end stuff. And thus, if, if you consider this card out of your budget, if you think it's too expensive, then the card simply isn't marketed for you. And my rebuttal to that is very simple. I'm poor. I'm poor, but I have a GTX 1080 Ti. My previous card was a, was a GTX 780. And there's a good reason for that. When you don't have much money, you like to buy a high-end card because you don't have the money every two or three years to buy a brand new video card because some new AAA game isn't going to run on the card you have. You want a card that's going to last you for five, six, or more years and keep running the latest AAA games. And you, you can't have that card cost $1,200. That's, that's ridiculous. There's no way you can afford that. Like, at the end of the month, I usually have an empty bank account, right? No money. In order to get my 1080 Ti, I had to save up money. Like, I got lucky, right? I managed to make about $300 extra in a November. And then for Christmas, my parents gave me enough money extra, and my grandmother gave me enough money extra that I was able to make up the difference and buy a 1080 Ti, a really nice one. I was like, man, I, I just want the, the best gaming card I can get so that in five years I'm not regretting my purchase, you know? Because I knew I couldn't replace the thing. I, I knew I wouldn't be able to. And I think that's something, like, Linus is so used to getting free hardware. So used to having enough money to just go out and buy whatever hardware he wants. He some, sees something that's cool, he can go out and grab it. He, he's got the money for it. He, he may not be rich, he may not be loaded, but when it comes to computer hardware, consumer-grade stuff, there's probably nothing that's out of his price range if he wants to buy it. Obviously, you know, he's got a family, he's got a wife. He's got to justify the purchases to his wife at the very least and to himself. Um, but he's also dropped 50 grand on meme stocks in the middle of the land show before, so we know... We know he has plenty of money. If he wants to go out and throw $1,200 at a video card, we know he can do it. It's not a big deal to him. And on top of that, he's used to, like, Seagate sending him a box of 16 terabyte enterprise class hard drives. And we're talking, like, 20 or 50 or whatever drives so that he can just build up a server and make a video out of it and be like, hey, Seagate, thanks. Thanks for sponsoring the video. Thanks for sending us, you know, what would that even be? Like a, a couple, 
Now that's got to be more than a couple grand. That's got to be like 20 grand worth or 30 grand worth of drives. That's got to be an absurd amount of money that they, the worth of hardware that they sent him. He's, he's built, done many videos like that. Not just one or two. It's, he, he lives in a world where people just send him expensive stuff for free to review or just use in videos, just to upgrade his stuff in his office. And I, I think he's kind of out of touch with gamers in general. I, I don't think he really understands what our needs and our wants are. And I think that's one of the major reasons why he thinks that $1,200 is totally acceptable for a, a 3080 Ti. Like, I think most people would have been, would have under, at least understood. Maybe we wouldn't have been completely okay with it, but we would have understood $1,000 for it. But, but that extra $200 is like a slap in the face to us. It's like, you can't get the card anyway, so we're just going to price it absurdly so we make as much money off the scalpers as possible. That's kind of what NVIDIA was saying. Um, but in order to not keep, to keep this video shorter than it, the last one, or my last attempt, I'm going to move on. His next point was the 3080 Ti performance was almost the same as the 3090. And for the most part, he's right. But what about the 3080? He didn't talk. In fact, he, he considered that he seemed to consider that irrelevant. So let's real quick just pop into some benchmarks here. We've got tech power ups review showing the 3080 Ti and the 3080. And um, what, what's this? What's, what's this? 6,800, 6,800 XT, 6,900 XT. Why are they all down here? Why are, okay, they're not down here in the 4K results, but in 1080p and 4, what? This, this is a $650 card, 680. What was the price on this thing, the 6,800? It was under $700, right? Or no, wait, was it, was it under 600? Holy cow, I can't remember. Doesn't matter. It's 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 no twelve hundred dollar video card. That's for sure. Hell, it was priced lower than the thirty eighty, right? It was it's cheaper than the thirty eighty, and here it is outperforming the thirty eighty Ti by like almost seven FPS for half the price. Granted, this is just one game. This is this is a Assassin's Creed Valhalla at ten eighty p and fourteen forty p. Well, let's take a look at this 3080 because that's that's what's really interesting here. So we've got like a 4 FPS difference at 1080p and we've got like a 5.5 FPS difference at 1440p. At 4K, got about 4.5 FPS difference again. I mean, we're not seeing hugely different numbers. And while, yes, it is pretty darn close to that 3090, if we look at this, Got only about 2.3 FPS difference between the 3080 and the 3090 here. Got about, uh, <laughs> we got a tenth of an FPS difference at 4 1440p. Now keep in mind this test was one with an AMD Ryzen 7 5800X, which I don't have. I've got a 3800X, which I was very lucky to get, by the way. That took some, some serious saving of money. I couldn't even rebuild the whole system. I could only replace the CPU motherboard and heat sink and RAM. That was it. I'm, I'm still rocking the same case I've had for like nine years. All right. Uh, let's, let's, let's check the next game here. Battlefield 5. Um, yeah, here's that 6900 XT at the bottom again. A thousand dollar video card. And the video was like, oh yeah, it's uh, the 3080 Ti is $1,200 because it outperforms the 6900 XT. Granted, I'll, I'll admit in most of these benchmarks, you will see the 3080 Ti outperforming the 6900 XT, but there is always that game. And if, if your favorite game happens to be one of those, you know? And again, we're here for the 3080, so we got 206.9 FPS at 1080p on the 3080, and the 3080 Ti is 213.1. So that's, that's what, about 6, 5. It's about 5.2 FPS if my math is not too terribly off. And at 1440p, we've got about, so it's less than 3 FPS. I think it's, 
I think it's 2.9. I think it's 2.9, but don't don't quote me on that. I'm I'm terrible at math. And here, here at 4K, we've got some difference. We've got almost 10 FPS. So here we actually see it shining a little bit. But then, then we see at 1440p and 4K, we've got the 6800 XT down there at the bottom, just kind of laughing at the uh, NVIDIA cards along with the 6900 XT. All right, Borderlands 3, maybe a little more relevant than Battlefield 5. Uh, we can see the 3080 Ti actually outperforming the 3090 at 1080p, which is very interesting. But we also see the 3080 is outperforming the 3080 Ti. Could, could just be margin of error. We'll, we'll call that margin of error and move on. Um, at 1440p, we've got, uh, oh, we got five tenths of it, half an FPS. We got, we got half a frame per second, half a frame. Ah, 14, or sorry, uh, 2160p or 4K, we've got almost 10 FPS. We've got about, is that uh, 8.2 FPS? I think that's 8.2. Don't quote me on that, though. Civilization, does anybody play that? Control, there's, there's a game people play, right? All right, so at 1080p, we've got, that's, that's a reasonable, what do we have about, uh, is that 4.9 FPS? Is that 4.9 FPS? Math. I should have I should, I should have grabbed the calculator. Um, we got about 10 FPS at 1440p. Technically, technically, I think it's a little bit less than that. I think it's uh, 9 point something, like 9.8. But that's, or no, 9.4, maybe. Unless my math is just totally off. It's around 9 FPS. We'll just say that. 3080 at 4K is 48.3, 3080 Ti is 54.5. So again, we're looking at about 6.2 FPS higher. I mean, we're not seeing significant increases in FPS. Like rarely we're getting close to 10 FPS higher with the 3080 Ti. Does that justify $500? Does it? Even if it is close to the the mythical 3090 that we'll never see on store shelves. Does it really justify $500? Uh, Cyberpunk 2077, I mean, yeah, sure, almost 10 FPS there at 1080p. Um, where's, oh, here we go. Um, about eight, nine, about, about nine FPS. So, so we're getting about nine FPS faster at 1440p. Where's that 3080? All the way up here. Um, maybe about 5 FPS, 4.5 to 5 FPS faster at 4K. Do you think $500 is acceptable for 4.5 FPS higher at 4K? Is that, does that sound good to you? $500? United States dollars, not Canadian. Death Stranding. Uh, and this kind of goes on and on. And even, even this review, we've got... Uh, What is this? Uh, oh, this is power draw. Where's the? Uh, I had this on. It's Gears Tactics. That's test system gaming. Watchdog Legions. Up oh, there's that 6900 XT again. So we got six FPS on average at 1440p, and we've got five FPS on average faster at 4K. Is does that sound like it justifies $500? I mean, five FPS. That's that's a hundred dollars per per frame, right there. Does is a hundred dollars per frame worth it? Ryzen Zero Dawn. We've got uh, ten FPS. That's decent. We've got five FPS at four K. Ten FPS at fourteen forty p. Is that does that sound good for five hundred bucks? Did you pay five hundred bucks for that? It just kind of keeps going on and on like that. We do see a decent win at, on Gears Tactics. Maybe not. I mean, it's almost 10 FPS at 4K. I guess at 4K, I can understand paying a little extra for 10 FPS, but I think I'd cap it at about $300 more and not $500. $500 is a lot of money, especially to someone like me who has nothing. 
I mean, uh, Wolfenstein Youngblood. Yeah, we see like uh, 25. Oh, 25. Oh, my math. My brain. <laughs> that's 20. That's clearly 27 FPS higher at 1440p and uh, 15 FPS higher at 4K. That's not bad, 15 FPS higher at 4K. But is 15 FPS worth $500 for you? I mean, is, is, does your 4K monitor... I mean, granted, these are average, so 160 FPS average probably means that your lows are better too. But is it really worth $500 for that at 4K? I mean, is your 4K monitor above 120 hertz? Because if it's not, wouldn't you rather just pay 700 bucks for the 3080? Or a thousand for the six? Well, I might as well just buy the thirty eighty at that point, right? Or the sixty eight hundred. Petro Exodus. I mean, yeah, we're seeing a few clear wins. This is like five FPS, almost faster at fourteen forty p. Um, four point six faster at four K. So yeah, okay, it does perform faster in most cases, but it's not significant. I think Steve Burke from Gamers Nexus said it averaged. 6% to 8% faster than the 3080 for $500 more. Would you pay $500 more for an average of 8% faster? 8%. Even if it was 10% faster, would you pay $500 more? I wouldn't. For 10%? I'd wait for the next generation. Let's see, what was the next point? Uh, scalpel prices. He made the point that $1,200 is not a big deal when you look at the prices that the other NVIDIA GPUs right now are going for because scalpers are buying them all up and reselling them for absurd prices. So if you can get, if you can get a 3080 Ti at MSRP at $1,200, and that's fantastic, right? What the hell kind of logic is that, Linus? Would you have said the same thing if it was the 3060 or the 3070 going for $1,200? Would, would you have said because of the scalpers, $1,200 is a great, is a, is a perfectly fine MSRP? That's that's okay. That's nothing wrong with that. No, of course you wouldn't have. I mean, let's be serious, Linus. $1,200 isn't acceptable for a, a gaming grade video card. This, this isn't a workstation card we're talking about. This is a gaming card. It doesn't have enough video memory to do any serious rendering with. The rendering processes would probably crash. The RTX 3090 is probably the minimum you'd have to get with that 24 gigs for modern. Like you wanted to make a serious like render out a two hour animation in Blender. And and we know this because Steve Burke did the testing, right? Okay, yes, you could do a simpler animation that's not as high quality, doesn't use as much video memory, whatever, right? But I think he just downloaded renders that other people had done. And they wouldn't run on the 3080. Two gigs of RAM enough to, to get it to run on the 3080 Ti? Is it? Because I have a feeling it probably isn't. I'm sorry that it's just not, none of these excuses he's making hold water. They just don't. Now, he also pointed out that, uh, or he tried to say that Steve Burke was wrong about the MSRP affecting scalping prices. And he pulled out the used GPU market as his proof, as his example of why MSRP doesn't affect resale prices on, on sites like eBay and whatnot. And uh, I'm sorry, Linus, but this isn't a used GPU. This is a brand new GPU being scalped. If the MSRP is higher, the scalping prices are going to be higher. And the reason for that is if people see a $1,200 MSRP, then $3,600 doesn't seem that ridiculous. If it's a $1,000 MSRP, then $3,600 seems more ridiculous. And let's do the math on that. Uh, 
What is 3 times 1,200? Well, that's 3,600. What is 3 times 1,000? Well, that's 3,000. 3,600 is 3.6 times 1,000. So it seems a lot more ridiculous, doesn't it? If the MSRP is $1,000. But it doesn't seem as ridiculous if the MSRP is $1,200. And so I think that argument, aside from, from the used GPU market not being proof of anything when it comes to scalping brand new video cards, I don't think the argument holds any water whatsoever. Um, another argument he made was that in the, NVIDIA doesn't manufacture anything. They're not a manufacturer. Therefore, they do not set the MSRP. What? Obviously, I concede the fact that NVIDIA doesn't manufacture anything, but they did the R&D. They probably picked out all the components they wanted on the boards. They contracted everybody to make the stuff for them. They got quotes from all these companies. They know what it's going to cost. They set the MSRP. The company making the cards for them did not set the MSRP. That's, that's not how it works, Linus. Now, another point he made was the cost of components to make the GPUs has risen since the 3080 was launched. Therefore, a higher MSRP was required for NVIDIA to continue making a profit off of these cards. Well, if that's the case, then uh, well, let's check the MSRP of the 3080. This is the uh, Tom's Hardware review on the 3080. 3080 Founders Edition. Launch price was $699 or $700. So if you're right about that, Linus, then the price of this card would have had to go up to compensate because there's no way NVIDIA is going to sell this thing at a loss, right? They're not going to tell the manufacturer, oh yeah, keep just keep manufacturing them, we'll eat the cost. They're, they're not going to do that. There's no way. So the MSRP on this thing has gone up, if you're right. Well, what's this? This is Best Buy, bestbuy.com. Refresh the page real quick. NVIDIA GeForce RTX 3080, 10 gigabyte GDDR6X, PCI Express 4.0 graphics card. That's, that's a 3080, right? It definitely looks like a 3080. I mean, that, that's a 3080, right? $699.98, that's $700. That's an SRP. Are, are they still selling them for this? I mean, they're out of stock at the moment, but as far as I know, these cards are still occasionally going in stock and selling for MSRP. The launch price. That means that the price of the components has not gone up so much that NVIDIA is losing money on these because they would have increased the price if they were losing money. I'm sorry, Linus, your argument doesn't hold water here either. If the cost of components had risen that much, this, this card would have gone up in price. I mean, you're, you're talking about a card that costs $500 more and is barely more than this. I mean, they're based on the same silicon. Oh, yeah, this thing has less compute units and, and shader processors and all that, you know. Plus, two gigabytes less RAM. But it's still the same silicon. I mean, so it's going through the same manufacturing process. I imagine they have most of it. In fact, I think I, I, I fell asleep during the Gamers Nexus uh, teardown on it, but I, I think it was basically the same card underneath that heatsink, but uh, go watch Gamers Nexus video to verify that because I don't remember if I was even awake when they pulled the heatsink off the thing. I should have rewatched it before I made this, I'm sorry. But uh, I just, I, I can't agree with you, Linus. I can't. 
I'm sorry, but I don't agree with any of the arguments you made. And I think the $1,200 price tag is ludicrous. And that NVIDIA should never have set it that high. They, they never should have set it that high. It's been half an hour. I, I didn't intend for this to go beyond 20 minutes. I'm sorry. I'm sorry I took so long. I have a tendency to ramble a bit. I definitely took too long on the benchmarks. But um, I'm going to cut it here. I think I've made my point. I, I hope I wasn't too hard on them. I, di I didn't mean to be. I didn't mean to make an ass of myself. I did kind of call them out harshly on Twitter, though. Go figure. I was kind of annoyed with him at the time because it was in the middle of watching his, his comments. And I think there was some stuff I, in the video that I forgot that I wanted to address, and I, I apologize for that. I didn't want to go back and rewatch uh, 40 minutes worth of, of Linus making me angry just to make this video because then I would have got into this angry, and I, di I didn't want to. I didn't want to be me yelling at Linus the whole time, you know, because he doesn't deserve that. I think he's just out of touch with gamers and he probably just needs to understand why we consider this to be unacceptable. Like we're, we don't consider these cards to be for the super rich. We, we consider these cards to be for the gamers who want performance cards or want a card that's going to run five plus years from now, the latest games. We, we don't consider these to be for the dude who's loaded and just looking for the highest end gaming rig he can build or buy or whatever. You know, but anyway, this has gone too long. Um, leave leave if your comments below if you have any thoughts on what I've said or what Linus has said. Um, feel free to to hit us both up on Twitter. And uh, thanks for watching, and have a nice day.